Hello, hello. Happy Wednesday. I am here waiting for hopefully people to pop in with me. And that gives me time to mess with lights, but that's just going to be one of those things, I think, today. We're going to have a few shadows and hopefully nothing falling over because that would be bad, especially if I'm playing with messy stuff. So if you are here and have have your hands free and can say hi in the chat. <clears throat> and let's see. So what I'm doing, I've been cleaning the studio lately, as a lot of you know, for like the last several months. And I've been finding stuff that I haven't used for quite a while. And some of that has been my alcohol inks. And it's just kind of ridiculous how... Um, how long these things have been sitting there. Hey Shelby, how you doing today? And so I want to, I need to ink up some tracing papers. And while normally I would use my, my uh, alcohol inks, I want to use these Bombay inks, which is India inks, because a lot of them are starting to dry up and I don't want to lose all that great ink. So I, um, I mean, it, it comes out pretty much the same way as using alcohol but you don't have the smell. And I want to do these on tracing paper because I need tracing paper pages. Okay, yeah, I'm just glad to know you're here. Appreciate it. And so what I've done is I've taken my tracing paper and some removable scotch tape on the back of it so that it's, it's kind of held down flat because it's still going to wrinkle and then I can iron it out somewhat when I'm all done. But... Let's see. And the one thing that you can do with these Bombay inks is you can, they don't quite bloom like an alcohol ink, but you can get some movement with them. Let's get some colors out. But yeah, I had to toss a few bottles when I was looking at these last night because the stuff just didn't, didn't hold up well over time. So got some oldies here. Let's see what we can use up. All right, so let's get these guys out of the way. I think I have places for my stuff to dry, so that's good. I have gloves because uh, the Bombay inks are of permanent ink and they will stain, and they will stain you for a while. <laughs> Ask me how I know when I first started playing with them years ago. I did not wear gloves and it was kind of messy. So, and also, this one's still, it's kind of wet. Get myself all set up here. You can layer these nicely because uh, once they're dry, then you can put another color on top of them. And they're pretty transparent, so they're kind of nice to use on the, <clears throat> on the tracing paper. <clears throat> Hydrate a little bit first. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is, well, let's see what we can use up. Let's see if we can use up some of this yellow that I think I had transferred to something else. I'm pretty sure this is, well, you know what? I'm not going to use that because I'm not sure what it is. It could be paint for all I know. Let's go to one of these yellows. Oh, okra, okra, okra. Oh, I probably don't say that right, but I love this. So what I want to do first is just get a background layer. And I mean, you know, I could write with this, but I'm not very good at that kind of stuff. This is great if you do calligraphy, but like I said, I just kind of want to get, um, get a color. So I've just got a baby wipe here. It's got a little bit of color still on it from before, and I'm just spreading it. And then I'll come back in after this one's dry. Um, maybe, or maybe I'll just leave it. I don't know. Probably wish that I brought in more. Oh, that should have taped down the edges even more. I wasn't sure how that was going to work. Normally I chase the paper all over the place. So it is Wednesday and we are in June, which does not seem possible. I hope whoever is watching this is having a good day. All right, so it's not done, it's just a first layer. 
think I set myself up with places to dry. Let's do lighter brown. I'll do sepia. And tracing paper, of course, makes all that wonderful sound. Tracing paper, parchment paper makes that great sound when we have them as pages in our journal. Ooh, see, this one's already... I went through all my... Um, my droppers last night and thought that I had them all unstopped, but that one not so much. So I gotta remember that does not want to drop. Just a really light, light brown to start. Yeah, I wish I'd brought more paper over. Oh well, we'll see. Maybe nobody else will show up and then we'll just kind of be. I brought some. Um, other stuff to color as well. When I'm working with wet, I like to have pieces of fabric and lace and cheesecloth and whatever else I might want to color because then if I have a mess, I don't want to, you know, sop something up. Let's put some of the other brown on here. Yeah, and this one, the dropper is starting to correct. I mean, it's just, I've probably had these things for 10 years and did not use them very well, so. Normally when I do tracing paper, you know, when I'm inking tracing paper, I am using distress sprays and it goes really fast. But like I said, I, I found these on the shelves and it's just all gonna dry up and have to be thrown away. So why not use up some of the color and I didn't have any other colored tracing paper left. That's a pretty brown. I like that brown. All right, let this guy dry. And they dry pretty fast. Not as not as instantly fast as alcohol inks, but pretty fast. Do I have any greens left? I have one green. I do. I have one green. Obviously, all my favorite colors are the ones that I don't have anymore. <laughs> So I am almost done, I think, with the great big studio clean out, which I did not think I would ever get to the end of. I have got a lot of boxes of things that are ready to go into a de-stash sale. And I've got a box of stuff that I can just pull from for Happy Mail. And then I've got a bunch of stuff that's going to go in the flow journals. Wow, interesting how the different colors spread some more easily than others. This really doesn't look green. It's more like a blue green. And then I've got a stack of stuff that's going to a friend that teaches art with kids. So it feels good. Um, I think I should finish the studio living and living room art desks this week. Hey, Glamping Bear and Scrap-A-Doodle. Hello. Happy to have you here. I am trying to use stuff before it dies and I have to throw it away with color. You know, who wants to throw away color? Stuff that can make color. So I'm just getting uh, my, my poor old Bombay inks, getting them out and I want to get a base, base coat on some papers. And then this one, let's just play with. They do not respond the same way as an alcohol ink, but they kind of do. You can do some different things. So let's see. We want maybe not that green. Terracotta. But they're all starting to split. So let's just get... different colors on here. It's a lot of ink. Ah, oh, but we have a plan for when we have a lot of ink. All right, so we can do a few things with this. If I'm not using the baby white, hey, Ginger Crafts. 
I am using tracing paper. This is just Strathmore tracing paper um, you get in the pads. So see now, it's not going to bloom a lot like an alcohol ink, but you can get some spread. And the spread is fun because then you can do drips if you want. And these are going to look like a hot mess, and that's okay. I'm, I'm really okay with it because I some of these will be actual pages in journals, and some of these will be made into bags. I should have put some alcohol in a sprayer, but I did not do that. And I could spray these with water as well because of the ink thing. And then you're going to get a different kind of spread. Okay, there, I'm getting a nice brown that I wanted. And I did not bring a brush over. Uh, let's see. Well, I don't have a good brush, so we're just going to, we're just going to dab some stuff. Nah, we're going to get some of my fabric. That's what we're going to get. Bear with me here. All right. Hey, Nettie. Yeah, if I had a brush, I would be doing that. But what I've got is fabric scraps. And it's actually kind of better than a brush for me because the bonus is since these are um, India ink like an alcohol ink, they will stain the fabric. And then I will get, this is like a funky green, which is pretty, but let's get it a little bit more interesting. So I can spread the color with this and it kind of does dual duty for me. Yeah, I may have to go get, I may have to go get my pad of paper, which is not a big deal. Cause now I know where to find it, you know? Interesting thing, when you start cleaning your studio, you can actually find things that you haven't seen for a very long time. All right, let's just blend this together. This is a nice, nice background color. Okay. And the reason I, um, I wanted to play mostly with these, besides the fact that I, I want to use up, you know, the ink, is I can't do too much with the alcohol in the house because, boy, the smell gets to me. So now look, now I've got something that's a little bit more interesting on this and I'm gonna just kind of twist it and tie it in a knot and let it dry funky. All right, this will dry. And I can tell what I'm gonna wanna do. I can already see the direction I'm gonna go here. So set up a couple things. I need to have my fabric scraps closer. Oh, I forgot my blower. That was the other thing I could show you. Okay, let's see. Let's do more browns. I knew there was another way I moved the, the ink on the page. So I've got this little blower and those of you with really good um, Air power could do it with a straw, but this was just a little uh, air blower for cleaning out my camera. And I use this with the alcohol inks. And it's nice if you want to maintain, you know, not dilute your color. You can spread things around like that. But again, I don't want strong color on this first layer. So let's get some fabric and we're just going to kind of wad it up and spread it around. And again, the, Bom the Bombay inks are India inks and they will stain everything they touch. So be forewarned. Yes, I'm sorry, tracing paper. This is just, um, I'm gonna have to go get my pad because I can tell I'm gonna go through a lot of it and I will show you the pad here in a minute. I didn't realize how much I really liked using, you know, the tracing paper or you could do parchment paper too if you don't have tracing paper. Parchment paper does the same thing. 
Um, it gets maybe a tad more wrinkly, but not really. And doing it like this without having anything else with it, um, it dries really fast. I mean, you don't really get a spread like you would with a uh, watercolor and with a um, or with an ink, anything that you're adding a lot of liquid or even with paint. But I can come back in with the alcohol. And because tracing paper, you know, wrinkles so much, the idea is to keep it as dry as possible because, you know, it wasn't designed for wet media. But it does iron pretty well. And just the, um, you know, you can do a little bit of a subtraction technique with when you get the alcohol in there. A little bit. But you got to work fast because, of course, the alcohol is going to make stuff dry fast. All right. Let's see. And, you know, you'll see a lot of the same colors because I tend to uh, work in natural colors because that sort of goes with my style of creating books. So what is everybody working on today? I am happy to have an indoor, indoor project because it has been really hot here in California. The AC I'm very grateful for. It is Wednesday. Hey, Lorna. Um, PH Martin inks. It depends on if the inks. I mean, th th that's what these are. These are Dr. Let's see, can you see that? Uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay inks, and it's an India ink. So I know he's got some acrylic inks. I mean, any of that stuff, any anything that will impart color will work like this. For me, like I said, I'm just trying to really use up some of this stuff that has, is going to go bad. I mean, nothing is worse, as far as I'm concerned, is throwing away something that's all dried up. And unlike watercolors that you can reconstitute, I mean, I've tried putting some alcohol in some of my old ones, but it's just more trouble than it's worth because the uh, stopper or the dropper parts, the rubber part of the droppers dry up and you can't really get down there to mix it. And, you know, you could transfer it to another bottle, but then you don't have that much ink. And so I just said, let's just use this stuff up. And we'll use these scraps because I have so many scraps and I, can't, I have a big basket now in the studio where all my scraps that have been dyed go... And then I can just pull them, you know, to work on. So yeah, this is this is not blending. I'm not trying to do anything specific other than just get some color on this page. And so we can add a little bit of alcohol and go in maybe and subtract some color. Let's put some alcohol on a different spot on here. Let's see, I get now I've got some white spots that I can come back in and do something else with. You know, and the straight lines, I mean, if that's going to bother you, then you have to be a little bit more careful. But I'm, you know, I don't know when they'll be done and I don't know what they'll be used for. So it's funny. I started to prepare a whole, I mean, like 50 of these pages. And I thought, oh, there's just no way I'm going to go through that, that many of them. And I'm already almost done with the ones. All right, let's see if we do just a little bit of green. And yellow. And orange. Yeah, I should actually like pay attention on one of these on what I'm doing and kind of lay it out like a sunset. Cause they do make really with the way they shine through everything, they make a really pretty sunset. Okay. Some yellow fabric and the fabric scraps that I use are all usually um, a cotton or a linen. Just cause then it's so nice to work with. And my oranges, yeah, they're starting to get all kind of the bark clumps of color. And I tried to, maybe I, I don't know, 
I didn't use enough pigment, but I tried to put these into some little bottles to do them, you know, as alcohol inks, but they didn't quite play as nice as I thought they would. So yeah, you don't get much spread. You really got to use a lot of the ink, but then that's the whole idea, right? To use something up. Let's see. And where's my blower? And I even remembered today to put on my paint shirt so that when stuff goes splattering all over the place, I'm not going to be upset. <laughs> All right, this, this is more of a hot mess than I planned. Those of you that are really good at this sort of thing, you can just sit back and snicker in the background. I'm okay with that. Because if I really hate something when it's all done, then I just um, turn it into collage fodder. I just tear it apart and do that kind of stuff with it. But we're gonna see. Get some more ochre, okra up here. And let's just make some drips. And we can go some drips in some different directions. And I need to fill my water bottle. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how something starts off as something you don't think you're going to like, and uh, then it turns into be something you really do. Lorna, it's cold and windy there. Oh, my goodness. It hit like 95 here yesterday. Terry's working on her next herb kit. She's got some really pretty kits up in her shop now. Scrubbies spread really great. I uh, One of the other things I've been doing is consolidating all my mark making stuff for jelly printing. And I do have some scrubbies in there, but it's unlike jelly printing. You just don't have that much time to work with it. You have a little bit more time with the uh, jelly printing. In this case, the Tape is not helping me. Oh, the tracing paper is attached to some um, clear, they're called cutting mats that I get at the dollar store. And you get two for a dollar. And I use them for everything. And I also get these uh, metal cookie sheets from the dollar store because when I need to, these mats can fit on top of there pretty well. Um, and it's attached just with some removable double stick tape. All right, this one, I'm, this is looking a little bit more like the ocean now. Let's see, the trouble is when you get so much water on there, it's you can't really get it to drip because then it's wrinkles and it doesn't wanna go over, but it all comes out kind of neat in the end. Okay, that one's super wet, so we're gonna put this one aside. Yeah, it kind of looks like coral, you're right. Ah, and it just folded over on itself. Ah, that was not part of the plan. Let it sit. Okay. Oh, well, since the paper just decided to fall off of it, this is my sheet that I'm working on, and it's got a really slick side, which sometimes comes in handy, and then it's got a side that's got a little more um, texture to it. So, like, if you're doing um, faux handmade paper, you can get some nice kind of texture on that, and I will have some videos coming up on that next week. I don't think this one's going to probably stay. Uh, let's see. 
Wait a minute. Somebody said sunset. So we've got orange, yellows. I've got red somewhere. I've got one red. Oh, I've got two reds. One of the reds looks kind of... All right, so let's see. How do we want to do yellow, orange, red? Is that what we want to do? Sorry, looking at chat there. I can't really touch to scroll back up because of uh, my gloves are all inky. Let's see. Well, getting to the bottom of this one here. Yellow, shades of yellow. Happy to skip summer, don't like the heat. I want spring, you know, and I feel like we sort of went from cold right to, to hot with us because I don't do well being out in a lot of heat, <coughs> but I like to be outside so that I can gather things from the garden and do some eco printing. All right. So this is going to be not tricky, but let's see. Oh, I got these really long strips of canvas. Let's cut these into some smaller ones. Yeah, Lauren, I couldn't do it where you live. I, I the the cold. I just like to be spring all the time, and I don't mind the heat. You know, since we are lucky enough to have the AC, but uh, when the fog doesn't come in at night and we can't, you know, open the house up at night, that's kind of frustrating. It gets hot. Ooh, there's a lot of ink on this one. Some of the inks just seem to, same amount of liquid just really go a lot farther. So I don't know whether the taping it down helped or not. Let's see, we need. Oops, I guessed wrong on what color was where. Oh well, we'll just consider this as a blend. Yeah, you could be right. The lighter colors might move better than the, the darker ones. But again, these things are, they're not, they're not new. All right, we'll say, I guess that we're done with this one. I'm not, again, I can come back over. I can cut out strips. You know, it tears nicely um, once it's dry. Eh. Wow, and this is the last one I have taped. I will have to go get some more paper. Um, let's do blues. Yeah, I'm probably gonna be moving over to 
just alcohol inks. I do wonder if I could make these work more like alcohol inks if I put, I just don't think there's enough pigment. I think I have better luck using my Neo colors. Bye, Scrappy Doodle. You know, it's just fun to play and get reacquainted. I mean, it's one of the nice things about cleaning out the studio, and I've changed where I keep some of this stuff. So I'm, um, it's just making me think about my materials in a different way. You know, and the tracing paper is cheap. You can even, you know, oftentimes um, find them at the dollar stores. I mean, my dollar store doesn't have it very often, but sometimes they have their store brand of tracing paper and it works just as well, you know, so it's cheap. And the inks, you know, if you don't let them sit for 10 years are gonna last a lot longer. All right, but this is really dark and I don't want it really dark. So this is just water in this. So there's a little bit of a bloom, but not a lot. We'll just ignore my phone in the background. I forgot to put it on mute. So really, really great for paper. And Zoe says, hello. <laughs> now this will lighten up a lot when it dries. I think we want some blue on some of this fabric. Oh, Karen, happy to see you here. We'll catch you next time. All right. Now, spreading it around because it's kind of wet with the water I added. Kind of wet. You get kind of wet. You're either wet or you're not wet, right? Let me get all the way to the edges. This would be really pretty in my mermaid journal if I ever get around to working on it really sad when you make a kit and you don't finish something with your own kits. This will be some really blue fabric. I think we'll have to come back in and layer all the blues just sort of mixed together with the water. I like dabbing it with the fabric better than um, Kind of going side to side because you don't get those line marks. I really like these blues. Yeah, I should have stuck with my first idea, which was to just get a lot of color down. And you can do this just on, you know, regular copy paper too. I've done that. I just wanted the uh, translucent effect that I would get with tracing paper. I think everything's colored. Hard to see this mat is so coated with stuff. Makes great envelopes too in um, our little glassine, faux glassine bags. All right, let's take a look at the first one. Okay, so we've got brown and it's all dry. Whoops, and I got blue still not quite dry on my hands. Oh well. Now, I'm gonna 
let's do some circles. And hmm, alcohol, we'll try the alcohol. Yeah, it's a little more difficult now because it's not going to lay as flat. My step isn't holding it down. My tape isn't holding it anymore, but that was good for getting started. Every Wednesday, Ginger. Yeah, Nettie, I'm going to have to go back and edit that out before this post because I'm sure the uh, YouTube robots will pick it up and recognize it as a song and tell me that I owe something for it. So there'll be a little quiet spot. Um, I do lives every Wednesday at noon California time. I wonder what some black would look like on here. Terry Soggy. Soggy. Terry, what is soggy? I'm sorry, I missed. I missed something. All right, and I want some more fabric. Because I want to just kind of pat it around. But I mean, what is soggy? What what do you mean is soggy? The paper's not soggy. Um, it's just curly. I didn't need quite as much black, but it's getting kind of earthy looking. Let's tone down that black. Yeah, soggy is something where, like, it's so wet that it just falls apart. This isn't soggy at all. This is just, there's, the wet is on top. It's not going through. All right, this is looking more like what I wanted. Yeah, after a certain point, you can't get the color back off, and that's okay. Because then I can come back on this. You'll be surprised with another color. All right, uh, this one is just kind of blah. <laughs> Sorry, Terry, between not being able to see the tiny print on the, the chat window without decent glasses right now and uh, not being able to scroll not a lot of black I want just a tad well I'll save that for last uh, okay now I'll get my tablet and I'll do my uh, alcohol inks, I have more of my greens that I want. There's my, my blow thingy. Wow, how did I misplace? Ah, there it is. This old blow thing is fun to do with all kinds of 
paints and inks, watercolors. Woo! I will need a shower when this is over because I'm going to be covered with ink. I was trying to work on the cleaning up some of the bottles yesterday. I think I got it in my hair. Okay. I want just a little bit of black. Sorry, I'm kind of quiet. It's coming back in here to tap over it, I can kind of make some of these lines go into the background. It's trying to make it look a little more like something you might find in the woods. It's funny, it looks absolutely clear there in the center, but really there's color on it. All right, what do we need? We might need just a little more. Like yeah, the, the um, India inks layer really nicely. You let one layer dry. All right, I think this is enough of a hot mess. I'm not going to do any more with this um, particular piece of fabric, so I'm just kind of rolling it into a ball to spread some of the colors. And I think we will put a little bit of yellow in there and see if we can get any. And then I let things dry in a ball like this because it will dry differently, um, darker in some spots than others. I'm probably going to have to change my gloves here in a minute. Let's see. Are they drying yet? Yep, they're still. Okay. What do we have here? Let's look at the blue. It's almost completely dry, but it's almost all one color. So we're going to take some of the different colors. And we have some white. Thank you, Ginger. Yeah, I'm, I'm just sort of playing. I don't know a lot of my materials, so this is the best way to, you know, a lot of times I, I would buy stuff like many of us do on impulse after watching a video. And that is not always the, um, the right material for whatever it is that you want to do. So this is a good opportunity for me. to get reacquainted with some of these things. So the white is pretty thick and gloppy, but let's see. We can, there, get it to start to spread. So now we get some shades of blue because we got that white in there. This will be great for a beachy journal or mermaids get my edges already that's a lot more interesting already all 
I will have to post pictures of these when they're dry because they look completely different. Which is on the screen, what looks like really big white spots has got some really nice subtle colors. You also come back over these with something that's got some sparkle, which is pretty. All right, we're gonna, this one looks like that's about ready to, over there to dry, so let's. Just a little bit that doesn't have any color. So we're just gonna add some. Yeah, so see, that's gonna be some really pretty and you can already see the different veining that's happening. So it's gonna be a really pretty piece of fabric considering this was just an old sheet that I tore into pieces. All right, this has got a lot of liquid on it. So let's be careful where we put it. And all right, this looks like it needs one more something somethings. Hmm. And I don't know what that something something is. Let's see. This is, yeah. so, Sepia so did not know, want so to go right. This is just brown. Terracotta. Let's see if we can add this. Oh yeah, it kind of has that effect. That look to it. Let's get a little more something on here. And you'll just use the water because we're already wrinkled, right? So what the heck. Just want to get some of that to spread around. Mm. Yeah, this needs to get drier before I can really do much more of a layer on it. But we can put some dots. Color. I'm not so sure I like this one now, but again, that's what layering is for. So have you found anything material that you haven't played with in a while in your art space lately? It's just always a surprise to me. I open up a drawer. It's like, oh, I remember buying these things. <laughs> I have a bunch of um, really high quality color pencils and I don't really draw. I'm trying to figure out some ways I can use them up. Okay, we need to let you dry a lot. All right, what else have we got here? We have... This one's kind of blah. Okay, so we got our first layer. Get my thread off of there. Almost completely dry. So, hmm. brown, a little bit of terracotta, which is really watery. And this would react completely differently, I'm sure, on watercolor paper. This is a different sepia. Maybe this one's in better shape. 
<clears throat> I want to play with watercolor, but I get very dissatisfied in a hurry because I'm not very good with it. Oil paints, wow. All right, maybe a really big hot mess, I'm not sure. Ah, missed my dropper bottle. All right, let's see. Getting a few of the little circles. As long as I don't do the alcohol nonstop, the smell doesn't seem to be too bad because, boy, that alcohol smell can really get to you if you're not in a super ventilated place. And right now the house is all closed up with the AC on. Terry, you pick up things to recycle. You know, I used to do a lot of that kind of stuff, the recycling, recycled art kind of thing, and realized that it's more the stuff from the garden, like, I. I went out and picked up a lot of dried petals to use in paper making and leaves and they've all got their own little jar in the studio. All right, we need my brown fabric. All right, let's just pounce this around. Your calligraphers everywhere are grimacing at the way I'm using these, but oh well. I would see something on sale and I'd say, oh, I just saw so-and-so do that in a video and it looks so cool. And then I would buy it and then I would forget who I saw do it in a video, so then I wouldn't remember how to use it. This is getting a little bit of texture from the um, fabric as well, which is kind of interesting, maybe. Don't have any color on these edges here. It could be interesting. It could be just annoying. I don't know. I was a lot more excited about this last night. I'm not feeling... I guess it's because you always want when you're doing something on video, you want it to come out, whoa, but it's good to people to see things that don't quite do what you think they're going to do. All right, I'm going to try the black a little differently. I'm going to try putting it on my fabric. Let's just go at an edge, yeah. Just something about a touch of black that can sometimes just really kind of looks like it's been rolled over. Uh, a car tire has rolled over it a little bit. Yeah, in a few weeks, I plan to get the jelly plate out and do that live because it's a little, it's a lot of fun too. All right, I like that. Uh, what do we got here? This probably is ready to go on its little tray to dry. Maybe a little bit of space left. Let's add. Add some yellow. Oh, I know, Lorna, it's the same thing. You know, I was kind of plotting the whole thing out. I mean, I was proud of myself. I did get my desk cleaned off last night, so I wasn't stressing about that this morning and uh, got all my stuff ready. Yeah, it still needs a little bit more color somewhere. And then um, sometimes stuff just doesn't 
doesn't do what you think it's going to do. And that's okay. All right, let's just add some water to that. And that should help spread the color to everything. I know this looks really trashy right now, but when it dries, it's just kind of nice accent pieces to use in collages and stuff. Resin and concrete. Oh, wow, Ginger. I have never done anything with resin. I think of resin and I think it needs patience and I'm not real good in the patience department. All right, so got more browns. Where's the sepia that was actually working? This one, let's just shake it a little more. Yeah, and you know, I it goes a lot faster when you're spraying them, but I still trying to fix my spray box the way I want it to work. Thank you guys for the thumbs up. I appreciate that. I know I've said it before, but I do come back and take a look at those and they make me smile. I have all these bright colors. I'm in the cleaning the studio, I discovered unopened tubes big tubes of fluorescent paint. I cannot imagine what I was thinking I was going to do with fluorescent paint. I don't do fluorescent -y kind of stuffs. So um, I don't know. I guess maybe I could try and tone it down with a lot of uh, lighter colors and see if I could use it that way. But they might just have to go in the art box for friends. <laughs> Lorna, yeah, the mob makes their, their concrete jewelry, that's for sure. All right, let's get a fresh piece of white. I'm excited to tackle cleaning the um, fabric and lace up because I, it, it's been ages since I've done any sewing, and so I haven't really looked at the fabric. And then I got all this new stuff from a friend, so forward to reorganizing that and making some tough decisions about how do you get rid of some of the stuff. And you can do this through your stencils, of course, but it will stain your stencils. I'm kind of liking this. Once these little air bubbles dry, you're going to have some little pops. And I'm going to put some yellow in a few more places. Let's hit the yellow with the alcohol. Getting some bloom. It's got a little bit of a white spot on the paper, and it's not like the white spot matters, but it. Get some drips happening. I'm liking this. I've got some ironing in my future, I can see. All right, we'll let this one go off to the side and dry. And what else do we have that's drying over here? 
All right, this was another one that was just blue. I guess this was, they called that green on the bottle, but boy, it didn't look, didn't not look green. So what are we gonna put over the top of it? Let's just do yellows over the top of this one. Nitty, yeah. <laughs> Ginger, you're right. They do show what's been used. I like that idea too. I did find though in my clean out a lot of stencils that I don't use and I just couldn't believe the amount of them that I had. I got rid of some, but I, I really need to go through and get rid of some more. And then I keep things for mark making. I don't know if I want to put man, maybe a little bit of brown. And I I kept all these things that were in the shape of circle, like uh, tape dispenser rolls and uh, bottle caps and all those sorts of things, which were great, except that I don't use a lot of circles. It's kind of more of a modern look, and that's not really the sort of thing that I do a lot of. So I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, we probably need some white, huh? Well, let's see. Let's do this first. And then... Fill my water bottle. I've always been somebody that got my paper super, super wet. No matter what paper I'm working on, no matter what color I'm working with, form of color making I'm working with, I always end up with really, really wet paper. Okay, now I'm going to take this one. And I think I will grab some white. And of course, you know, tracing paper adds that wonderful crinkly sound when we turn the page that so many of us really like. Not everybody likes it. But then you have to make the journals that you love, not make the journal that, you know, think, oh, wow, well, everybody's making steampunk journals and I don't do steampunk or everybody's making vintage journals and I don't do vintage you know make sure you follow your own heart whatever type of art you're doing all my years of writing I did a lot of work for higher work that was not necessarily the work of my heart sorry I'm going out of frame there let's see too hot for two sweaters and too cold for just one. <laughs> a hottie. Is that a hot water pad or a hot water bottle or is that a heating pad? That's frustrating if you can't find a lot of the supplies that you want. All right. Am I going to ruin it if I throw some white on here? I don't think so. It's going to blend some colors. I honestly am not going to go shopping for anything uh, except for maybe glue or thread in the near future. All right, let's see. This could almost be kind of a watery thing. It's kind of a blue-green. I like my greens and my alcohol inks a lot better. I think the um, these inks are great if you like to do a lot of color mixing, my brain doesn't want to work that hard usually. Some of my first classes I took, I remember doing my little um, boards with all the different colors on them that we were supposed to you know, learn. This made this and this made this and combine this with this specialty gel or what have you. And uh, after a while, I was like, okay, this, this isn't fun. I know color theory is important, but I wasn't enjoying it nearly as much as maybe I should. 
So see, each layer really adds something else. The more layers, the more I like it. And it looks really, really white here on the screen, but trust me, um, when this dries, especially, you'll see it's it's definitely blending itself. I think we'll put another little dab on top of the white and let it spread. Yeah. So we don't want it to look like fried eggs. Or at least I don't want to. Perhaps your style of art is fried egg art and then go for it. Okay, I'm liking those drips. Oh, when you put the water on top of where the alcohol is, you get some neat little blotchy stuff. Well, if you're in the Foxy Crafters, I will post some pictures over there and I'll post some on my um, poppiness page as well. Yeah, it looks a lot better than just that solid color. When I take them off of the reflective thing, I think it'll get better too. You'll see better. Let's see. I need another flat place. Uh, bear with me here. <laughs> okay. Those guys look okay. We have two more here. This one. Oh, and this one doesn't want to stay down either. Okay. Hmm. Doesn't do anything for me the way it is. Just not quite me. So what are we going to do to it? If in doubt, add brown. That's me. And we're going to see what that'll do over the bright colors, especially if we thin it out. And then we'll add... My favorite yellow. Whoops. And some terracotta. All right. And we're going to fill the water bottle. Oh, Ginger, yeah, please chat away, especially since I'm not talking very much today. My life is kind of, you know, small. I so there's not a whole lot of different things happening unless I continue to tell you about what I'm working on or cleaning up in the office studio stuff. So nobody ever chats too much. Oh, Ginger, we're going to expect to see then some things with you and tracing paper, huh? said one of the things I like about it is it's it's cheap fun look, look at that see that's just from sopping up all the color isn't that awesome just line that guy up let it dry and I need another piece okay we're coming to the end of this piece so we'll just let it stay a nice big piece Loose threads. Yeah, I'm not liking this. This is my least favorite of any of them so far. 
Um, lots of brown, I guess. I'm going to do lots of brown. Close to the edge there. Huh. Let's try spreading. Make this one just really dark. Except it won't be really dark because when it dries, it dries lighter. Ah! When paper wants to escape. All right, I'm gonna have some brush marks here. Toning it down is a little better. What if we add some blotches of white? move around a little. So when I start hopefully next week on next batch of journals I'm going to be working on then I'll be thinking more in specific color tone families that I'll be working in which will probably be greens and browns but this is kind of fun to not have a, a plan and I'll just go in my stash what I like about uh, tracing paper is it doesn't rip when it gets all sopping wet like printer paper. All right, liking this better now. Sometimes you need a little bit of white. almost like doing a gesso, except not really. And of course, some of the ink is wet, so you're getting some different colors on it. And I have, let's see. Okay, this is a scrap piece that I had. What happens when we do this? Okay, just going to pull up some. Nice. Interesting. So that makes that almost completely white. Uh, and it has no place to go wait, wait and dry. Whoops. That was Susan not thinking ahead because this piece is so small. I have no place for it. Let's see if it'll stay there because it's kind of curvy. All right. I sopped up some of the ink, but I didn't make it pretty. So, let's so much ink on there now that it is actually acting almost like an alcohol ink when I put those drops on.
Well, oh, that just contaminated that part. This one might end up being just collage papers. That's okay too. That is okay too. some pinkish grays. I should go get some blank paper and then just do a few of these with my alcohol ink. Should I do that? I have, what, about 45 minutes left? One little thing right there that I don't like. All right, let's see. this one. Yeah, the spots can be fun. It just, I, I was getting that was getting even more of a hot mess. You can see a couple of these that need one more layer. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, this brown, when it gets down to a certain point, it's not going to come up out of the dropper anymore. that I should get another rag. Have that ready. Um, sepia, where did it go? Right here. This is just a little bit darker. I have tried embossing tracing paper, but it might be kind of interesting. I don't have an embossing machine, but I have a few folders that I emboss by hand with. And of course, you can cut it into whatever shapes you want to. Darken it down a little. I don't know if it's wet enough for the water to do anything or not, but sometimes. So light, just a very light color. I think we need more. It needs to be darker. Uh, all right, so this is one of those I'm going to have to start pouring out pretty soon. You get a different effect if you drop it on paper that's already got some water or alcohol in it. It's going to spread a little more on its own. to the edge on this one side. You can tell it's going to go flying off the edge. Sometimes having the paper stuck down, it doesn't work. <laughs> All right, it's bottom corner here. All right, now let's 
loosen that up with the drops. So because it's still wet, I'm getting that nice little similar to alcohol ink blooms. This one, this paper is very wet. And everything is slip sliding all over the place, but that's okay. That should be some nice blotches. All right. Let's see if we can manage to not spill it. All right, this one is dry pretty much. I like it. A little bit of ink left on here, so we're just going to... Add to it. So yeah, these will dry. I will iron them and then take some pictures. All right, so now I've got, got these guys drying. anything else paper wise is drying it. Let's take a few other things that need color. So I have um, this is spider web stuff. I don't know what else you would call it. <laughs> Comes out at Halloween time at the dollar store and it's really soft. Uh, it almost feels not, you know, obviously it's not wool, it's some kind of a acrylic, but it can feel similar to roving, you know, wool roving. Um, so normally I would dye this with alcohol inks or distress inks, but let's see what we can do with this stuff. And of course, what colors do I need? I need some browns. And it'd probably be better in a bowl, but you know, we're just going to. We're gonna go for it. See if we can use some of these things up. Let's see, let's not contaminate everything if possible. It's really sticky. Ah, scissors, scissors. Hey, Lala. How are you doing today? I've been dyeing a bunch of papers and now, let's see, we'll see. I don't know it'll spread very well with water in here, but we're gonna see. This stuff just does not wanna come out of the bottle. This, whatever this, Faux spider web stuff it takes a long time to dry, but I figured it's a good thing to have when it's so hot I can put it out in the sun. I was doing some faux handmade paper and uh, it dried in like an hour, <laughs> which was really surprising to me. So it'll be interesting to see what this does to the texture because I do it with distress sprays and I get one texture and I do it with alcohol inks and I get another texture. So let's... Let's add, no, I don't want to add yellow. Um, add some terracotta just to get some different tones. And let's add some alcohol and see if that'll help spread it around a little better than the water. So now we have a nice hot mess. <laughs> but hopefully, as it dries, we'll get some interesting tones. Um, let's see what else we can put in there. 
Yeah, it's much easier in a bowl with liquid. But this should give some interesting effects. You know, it'd be nice then to use in collage on tags, you, you know, use it like you would cheesecloth. Hard to get it all the way wet, interesting. So this could just dry in a big old clump stuck together too, I don't know. Not, not nearly as fluffy. All right, where's my... I'm just gonna put that down. Uh, speaking of cheesecloth, we can do some cheesecloth. I have it in a couple. Oh, and this is some other stuff I found years ago at the dollar store. It's kind of a neat netting. And cheesecloth in a different size. So these can be the browns. Oh. All right. I think I'm ready to be over these old inks. This dropper is just really broken. So let's just pour it out there, right? That one can be dead. Definitely easier to do this with sprays. But, you know, I had it out here. The other papers have to dry. Let's add some alcohol to kind of saturate the fabric and spread a little bit. I'm almost out of alcohol too. All right, let's see. Hey, Maria. Lorna, I'll chat with you later. Oh, Maria, you're back in your office. Yeeks. Hope they've got good safety precautions in place for you. Okay, the terracotta adds something nice to that. So let's, yeah, I think I've reached the point where I just wanna use these guys up and move on to materials that better respond the way I want them to. <laughs> some on the spider webby stuff so the fabricy things will not be dry enough to show you today but I think the other stuff will be drying a little bit mostly dry and then I'll iron them and take pictures I'm putting together little uh, clear shoe boxes with my various color families of things so that then when I go to work on a journal that's browns, I can pull out my brown box. Yay, that's why it's empty. These are um, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay India ink. And I think a lot of calligraphers and, and you know graphic artists use those, use them and I saw somebody 10 years ago do something with them and had to have them. And as I've been cleaning the studio and finding old stuff like this, I realized that I'm not using them and that they're starting to, the rubber stoppers are starting to dry up, which isn't good. So I have been using them on tracing paper. They make really nice because they're mostly transparent things on the tracing paper, but I'm not, I don't draw, I don't do calligraphy, I don't do fine lettering, and I think that would probably be better for that. Of course, I still got some that doesn't get color. There's always some of it that doesn't get the color. Let's see, maybe some alcohol will help. Yeah, we had my German teacher in high school taught calligraphy but I 
I never had the patience to learn how to do all the things I was supposed to do with it. I know it wasn't that I couldn't do it. It's that I just did not take the patience to practice with it. But hey, for coloring my little fabric scraps and things, this will be a good way to, to use some of them up. And I got some nice things on the tracing paper. It's just not, you know, nothing, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that kind of stuff. And this is how you decide whether you enjoy working with the material or not. You know, you, you keep playing with it and say, okay, yeah, I like this, or nope, this really doesn't do it for me. So I guess I need to figure out how to edit on YouTube now since my phone went off and I've got to get that sound out of there. I'm sure don't need to have anybody telling me I can't have that playing. Dang it. <laughs> so if there's the hardest way that you could possibly do something, that is usually Susan's way, just so you know. There are a whole lot easier ways to color fabric, and I do that with my alcohol inks really fast. But again, I had these out. I got a few little tones on there. Just really like getting the two tones. All right, what else can we grab? Um, well, this thing. So this is a green. So if we can get some different shades of browns on there. Maybe a little black, huh? for some accent and if we add white we're gonna get something different with it all right and then we're gonna add the alcohol to just kind of make a big old hot mess this is one thing I don't mind making a hot mess in because it's just all gonna give me some really interesting little fabric scraps to play with all right and now whew, the black might take over everything as black does. I did put down a lot of black. And the inks are not cheap, so I know people that, that use these kind of things are probably thinking I'm insane, but there's not, they're not good enough to pass on to somebody else, so I might as well use them up on something here and know going forward that it's not my favorite thing to work with. Let's add some white to that black. That'll give us some grays. going to drop some alcohol on top of it to make it spread and we'll let that dry but the one side is probably going to be all black and that's okay because probably when I use this in sewing something down you're only going to see one side anyways scrunch that part up just a little one of my ones that doesn't help. That's a baby wipe. I want fabric. There we go. Fabric. All right. Let me give me some nice dark colors. Oh, thank you, Shelby. I, you know, afterwards I did find a, a paper pad that had some gesso on it. And I played with them a little bit on that, but they weren't my favorite. What my favorite thing was is to take the uh, crayons and a baby wipe and put the um, take the wet baby wipe and rub the crayon on the baby. Oops, I'm out of the frame. Rub the crayon on the baby wipe and then rub that over the paper because then you don't get the crayon lines. That was a really neat tip. All right, so this is a boring green. Let's see if we can 
make it exciting without it being black. I love doing these with my alcohol inks, but again, I keep telling myself that I'm just going to use these things up. Okay, where it this says it's green, but really it's blue. But we'll see what we can get. Orange. And a yellow. Ah! As the ink goes everywhere. Yeah, see, now I get green. If I put the yellow with my blue, it definitely wasn't green to start with. Okay. Let's add water. I'd like a tie-dye mess. And let's just mush it up. Yeah, I, I saw that after, you know, re remember that after I was done filming and you don't get any kind of the crayon lines. It's just, um, it was a really nice way to use it up and it blends very easily. All right, so we have some orange, but not much. What can we do on top of that? Um, I guess. Add some of the browns because that will go with all the neutral stuff. Get a little bit of orange over here to keep with the orange. And then alcohol. Why do I mix the alcohol in the water? Absolutely no, no reason except that it's fun to watch it spread the stuff around when I'm doing it like this. I mean, I'm not trying to do anything other than get color on fabric. Then I'll piece some of these together and make a patchwork journal cover out of it, something like that. I just enjoy having a, a reason to play with materials and chat with you guys, although I know I'm not looking at chat as much because I said I can't really scroll. in the center of that. That's where I know I have the alcohol and it should. I'm not going to scrunch this one up anymore because it'll just all mush together and just make more green. I really want the tones is what I like. I like stuff to look like it's been left out in the woods for years and years. <laughs> okay, probably wouldn't last that long out in the woods, but you know, in my imagination, that's the way it is. a little differently. Right there needs a something something. Yeah, spread it a little. All right. Uh, one more small something. That's kind of small. We can do I think this yellow. Terracotta. This is why I'm not a good cook because I I don't follow any recipes. I just sort of play. 
I play. Yeah, I have a lot of painty paper towels. Uh, well, not paper towels. I use just baby wipes now because I like the texture. And they make some really, really neat things. I usually use them for um, covers for mini books. Just a little bit of brown to this one. And these little scraps, I mean, I just love having these to pull from. Interesting when it dries. All right, let's see. Take my really tired gloves off. Oh, I managed to do it without getting ink all over me. All right, and then let's see what's dried. So this one's dried, and I like this a lot. Just got a lot of the nice earthy colors. This was the one that I smushed on something else, so I might do a little something something in there, but this would make a really cute little glassine bag. What else do we have that's dry? This one looks dry, mostly. These are the colors I love. Yeah, the inks, um, myself, I probably won't buy them again just because there's other things I like to use more. This is looking a little better, but it needs something. It's a little, I don't know, doesn't do it for me. I'll probably regret this because I don't have any gloves on right now, but we'll see. Where's my blower? All right, now if we drop the alcohol. You know, there's such a different, a lot of different kind of inks to play with, Lala. Yeah, let's add terracotta. Uh, all the rubber stoppers on these are just about rotted through, so. I'm going to have to, I might just mix a bunch of it with water and dip my papers in it. And I've done that in the past and that way I can use it up and move on, have the room on the shelves for something else. I have not done much with coffee filters. I throw some in my um, eco dyeing every so often. And then I forget I have them, so I don't use them. So there's probably a bunch of those buried on a shelf somewhere. So this will probably make a, a nice envelope of some kind. It might make a page. We'll see once it's, once it's ironed, things change when they're nice and flat. dry a little more. Uh, this blue is almost dry it looks like. Yeah so this was the one that was all a solid color when I did the first layer 
and adding a few more things on top of it really perked it up. Looks yellow on the screen. It's actually a little bit more orange. So we're going to add a few drops of different yellows. So next time if I do stuff like this, I would probably tape all the edges down. And again, I just use the removable double stick tape. It just needs to hold long enough for the the colors to spread around because once it starts to curl up, then sometimes the color goes, you know, all off the edge and you lose it on your table, which is not part of the master plan usually. <laughs> I like the addition of that bright yellow, so I think we'll need to do just a little more of that. Uh, I love this blower. Okay, let's do that bright yellow. And that one's almost empty too, which is good. Hey Erin, happy to have you here. I'm just about done for the day, just kind of going through what I've been playing with and using up my old Dr. P.H. Martin's, um, whoops, can't, ah, well that wasn't part of the plan, was it? I guess we just added pink to it. Uh, India inks. Well, this is going to morph into something completely different now. And I've been playing on tracing paper. All right, so now that we put some of this down accidentally on purpose, right? Is that the way we think of it? Let's balance it out and, and see. I have no gloves on, so my fingers are going to be stained for the rest of the week. But, oh, well. Let's just get this color in a few more places, and then it'll look like we planned it that way. And I'm just making basic background papers that I could use in my journal or I could use to make envelopes or tags or, you know, whatever. It's got a nice little crinkly sound. They iron up pretty well. They wrinkle when they're wet, but then they dry and you can iron them. See, that doesn't look bad. Accidents happen and you just roll with them, but that's what happens when you're leaving all your jars open. So Aaron, what kind of stuff are you working on today? Are you an old timer in the junk journal community or are you kind of new to all of this? All right, let's see. This one's almost dry and I am not going to mess with it. It's exactly what I wanted. The spots that are white, I don't know if it sees any better without this on there or not. These really aren't see-through. They're just, they've got a nice light, light brown tone. So in a journal, this will be great. Let that one sit there. What else do we have that's almost dry? <clears throat> this is about dry. It's funny on the screen, it looks very yellow. In real life, it's not very yellow. It's kind of like a, a golden brown. And I'm not going to dink with it. I know I'm, I've got an urge to do something else in here, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave it be. And what else? Oh, floor here. Let's see. This one's really wrinkled. I don't know how much you can see. So it does have some light tones, but I bet we can lighten it just a little bit more in spots where it's still wet with some of the alcohol, Ooh, which we are almost out of. Hey, Lala. Oh, hope you feel better soon. Take care. 
Oh, Aaron, well, you've got some some great inspiration there, and it's a wonderful supportive community. Pop into lives when you can. Um, join some of your favorite groups. Some of my favorite groups on um, Facebook. Uh, my most favorite would probably be the Foxy Crafters by Tracy Fox, and uh, Junk Journal Junkies, of course, and Artie Mays. What I'm doing a lot of lately is making papers because I am out of papers. Before I start working on some new journal projects, I really need some new papers. All right, this is going to give it a slightly different tone. I really would like to get, well, we got the alcohol in there. We're going to add a little bit of the white. will give us a slightly different blue. And then if I take my water on top of the alcohol, and spread, let's try the blower. Ooh, that's got some nice tendrils. Okay, there we got some nice lighter blues happening. And I will probably, the ones that I, I think are worth it, I will scan some of these. And then I can build upon that. Oh, Gail, you're right. Shelby, thank you. Thank you. How can we forget Gail? She's absolutely the uh, fabulous person to watch for Anubia especially because it, nothing that she does is intimidating and she's very encouraging. This white ink is wanting to split, so let's see if we can. I'm trying to keep myself from grabbing a piece of fabric to dab at this because it'll change the effect and I really kind of like what's happening right now. Shake this up a little more. I'm going to put some white down first, and then we're going to add some blue. off the edge. No, I do not want you to go off the edge. <laughs> All right, this is going to be very much an underwater one. Yeah, Gail is a uh, rapid poster. I just am impressed with her energy level. Big old pool of blue there that I would love to go after with a piece of fabric, but I'm being good, I'm being strong, I'm not gonna do it. Just be a nice thick piece of blue there. The split white means that I can probably toss that jar of white. Dog hairs are extra texture, right? <laughs> and sometimes my hair. The other day I went to pull what I thought was a dog hair out and it was three feet long. I realized my own hair was getting stuck in the paint. All right, this will probably be just a really nice collage paper. That's okay. This 
one needs a lot more drying time now. I think that's about everything we did. This one is close. It's not quite, not quite, quite. You just add bright yellow where the white is. This one's almost done anyways. So if you have played with India inks and done something with them, tell me about it in the comments because um, I still have a lot of this to use up. I have a lot of bright colors, which is not my thing that I usually use. So I'm going to need to, I guess I should just color paper with the bright colors. That'll go faster and my brain just doesn't think in bright colors. If I could paint flowers, I might think in bright colors more often. Blendy, blendy. Yeah, stick my finger right in it. When I start making a bunch of messes, a bunch of hot messes on my old stuff. It's probably time to say enough. And I'm just coming up on my two hours, so about what I wanted to do. So I thank you everybody for hanging out with me today while I played with these. And like I said, I will let them dry and I will iron them and post some pictures. And I will be back next Wednesday at noon my time here in California. Not sure what I'll be working on. Kind of depends on where I am in the cleaning up process. Ooh, that kind of looks like the ocean now, huh? Yeah, it's Shelby. Jinx. Yes, looks like the ocean now. We'll see what it looks like when it dries. So I'm going to go off and have a long, tall glass of cold water. And I will uh, delete the part where my phone was ringing in the beginning of the, the video. And then that will be up on my channel and I will see you next week. Thank you so much for watching and hanging with me. You guys go out in the world and be kind and have an awesome rest of your week. Talk to you later. Bye for now. Okay. Now